Hi everyone, welcome back to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. In this episode, I wanna talk about a seldom used communication pattern in iOS, something called the responder chain. It's sometimes a little more elegant than protocol delegate, and in certain cases, it's just a better fit for communicating back and between your view controllers. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at what the responder chain is, how it works, and a couple scenarios where you may want to use it over protocol delegates or closures. All right, let's begin. The protocol delegate pattern is one way child view controllers communicate back to their parents in iOS, and it's great. You simply register yourself as a delegate, you communicate back to the parent via its protocol, and that's how child view controllers communicate back to the parents to let them know when certain things are going on. Now, that works great when you have a one-to-one -one relationship between a view controller and its parent, but what if you have a container view or something a little more complex? Something like this. Here the child, where we want to send a message back, is a couple steps away from the target. Protocol delegate will work here, but we'd have to implement that protocol and pass that delegate through every view controller between the child and the parent. What we need is a way of sending a message from a child view controller to a parent without having to add a lot of plumbing and infrastructure every step along the way. And with the responder chain, we can do that. We can declare a method or a protocol the receiver needs to implement, and then fire an event from a child up to a parent, leveraging something called the responder chain, bypassing all the view controllers and views along the way. Let me show you a quick demo, and then we'll dive deeper and see exactly how this all works. Okay, so to see how this all works, take a look at our UIKit demo uh, application here. I'm gonna drill down relatively far into the application for our responder chain demo. And when I click this button, I would actually like to send a message all the way back up to the application delegate bypassing all the view controllers and views along the way. Responder chain lets us do that. When this responder button is pressed, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna fire up an action through the responder chain, which is gonna go all the way up to the app delegate with this single line of code right here. UI application shared send action, sends the action I want to send. In this case, it's a type protocol called responder action with a method called fetched weather. This is really important here. I'm gonna set the target to be nil. This is what invokes the responder chain. This is what bypasses sending it to a specific view controller and fires it up the chain, waiting for anyone who implements this protocol or method along the way to intercept. And the interceptor for us is gonna be app delegate. If we take a look at app delegate, via an extension, we just implement this responder chain protocol, we're gonna hit this breakpoint when we hit that button, thereby bypassing everything between the application delegate and the child view controller way down the view hierarchy there. So if we hit this button from the responder chain view controller that fires through the responder chain, going all the way up to our app delegate, and we can indeed see that we hit that breakpoint way up in the app delegate, that message coming all the way from the child view controller via the responder chain. Okay, so let's dive deeper now and see how this all actually works. Sometimes we can get really familiar with the whole set of technologies without really understanding what's going on under the hood. And that was certainly the case for me with the UI responder chain. What I didn't appreciate was that every control we have in iOS is actually backed by a protocol called UI responder. Take UI button for example. If we drill into UI button, we see that UI button is a control which inherits from UI view, which inherits from something called the UI responder. And if we take a look at this UI responder, we can see it's responsible for a whole host of really interesting things. This next is part of the responder chain. This is how the responder chain decides what view to present next as it goes up the chain of events through the various view hierarchies. And then we'll see some other language in here that might seem a little familiar. If you've ever had to give up a keyboard, you'll know what resigning first responder means. And we can see down here that it's really responsible for all the touch events that happen in UIKit. Touch begin, moved, end, canceled. Anything that happens on a control comes through this protocol called the UI responder. And it works like this. When a UI controller gets an event, it fires it up the responder chain in the app. Normally the view controller would intercept this and hook that event up to whatever app logic we've defined. But by setting the target to be nil, and invoking send action on UI application shared, we can fire the event up the responder chain, checking views and view hierarchies along the way. And if no one decides to handle it, 
It eventually makes its way all the way up to the UI application delegate, who is the last link in the chain. And if he doesn't handle it, no one does, and the event goes unhandled. And the thing that makes this all go is the target action mechanism. Normally when we connect a button up to our application logic, it's the target action that connects these two worlds. We basically go add target, passing our self, our action for a given event, and this is what fires a given method in a given view controller, like whether pressed, when we click that button. UI responder chain leverages the same mechanic, only instead of passing in self, we pass in nil. And that's what invokes the responder chain and fires the event up. Okay, a couple of gotchas and things to note. You think leveraging the responder chain in a navigation controller with lots of children view controllers would be a really good fit for this pattern. But unfortunately it's not. One thing you gotta be careful of with navigation controllers is when you present them on top of each other, not all the views are always visible in the view hierarchy. So if you're wondering why you're not capturing a method higher up in a UI navigation controller, it's probably because that view isn't there. The picture you really wanna keep in mind when working with UI responder chain is this one. Just understand that your controls first go through their view. That view then checks the view controller to see if it would like to handle it. And from right there, the view controller then goes to the window, the application, and the UI application delegate. And a good way to test this and see it in code is like this. So when we invoke the responder chain from this view controller and fire it up to the view hierarchy, look at all the different ways we can handle this. The first place we could intercept this is on the view controller itself. We can basically just implement that protocol on our view controller and intercept it right here. And in this case, we're gonna pop up an alert saying, hey, here's today's weather. That's the first place we could. But if we wanted to walk further up the chain, we could also capture that in the UI window. By commenting on the view controller here, rerunning the application again, we can now see if we hit the responder chain in this case, that we will indeed fetch the weather from the window. And as we continue to walk up the responder chain, and comment respective steps out, we can see how we can walk further and further up the chain until we get all the way to the app delegate and eventually handle that event at the top. Because the responder chain can be a little bit more opaque than protocol delegate, debugging it can be a little bit more challenging. Fortunately, one thing you can do is if you ever wanna know where you are in your view hierarchy and what views come next, you can set a breakpoint and ask what views are visible from where you are and walk up the responder chain. For example, here we are in the responder chain view controller. I can simply ask myself, because I'm a view controller, what comes next in the responder chain? And for me, it's something called the UI view control wrapper view. That's something iOS sticks in there. But as you walk up and up the chain, continuously asking it what is next in its responder chain, you'll eventually see all the different views and all the different view controllers in your hierarchy. And this is a really handy technique for just going further and further up, looking for the view or the view controller you're looking for. And this can be really handy for telling you if your view controller is in the view hierarchy or if it isn't. Eventually you're gonna to get to the top and that's gonna be something called the uh, application delegate. And after that very last one, you'll know you've hit the end of the road when you ask for the very next responder in the responder chain and it comes out nil. So anyways, there's a handy technique just for helping you see what's in the responder chain from where you are. A couple of other things to be aware of, accelerometers, gyroscopes, and the magnometer, those aren't included as part of the responder chain view hierarchy. That's handled by something called core motion, so you won't receive events up the responder chain if you're using those technologies. Something else to note is that the responder chain can be overridden. You can decide what to present next in the responder chain by overriding the var next variable on UI responder. UI kit already does this for you. That's how the view knows how to pass things to the view controller and the view controller to the window. You can inject something else in the responder chain so long as it corresponds to the UI responder protocol. So what are some of the pros of using responder chain? Well, it's really fundamentally how UI kit works. It can be less clunky than protocol delegate, it's natively built in, and it underpins a lot of how UIKit and eventing already works in iOS. And one place I find responder chain works really well is in container views. If you've ever had to create your own container view where you were manually adding and removing view controllers as part of the view hierarchy, that's a really good candidate for responder chain. I also really like the way the user loaf people describe using the responder chain. 
Here the example they give is a complex root view controller like this with a split view controller. This is a nice candidate because here you don't have to implement protocol delegate every step along the way. You can just use the responder chain and fire an event up from this list view controller up to the top here. What are some of the cons? Well, for one, it's not wildly known. You won't see this in a lot of applications. Older school people who have been doing Mac and iOS development for a long time, they might really like it, but it's not as commonly used. And if you're not familiar with this pattern, it can seem a little bit like magic. So my recommendation when it comes to responder chain is to reach for it second. First, start with protocol delegate or closures and see if that will solve the communication between your child view controller and the parent. But if you have a container view, or you do have a lot of other layers of indirection or view controllers between your child and where you ultimately want to send the message, that's where the responder chain can really make sense and make your life a lot easier. Okay, well that's it for this episode of the Swift Arcade. I hope you found that useful. All the source code and everything is available on GitHub, so do check that out. And if you have any questions, for sure to drop them below, and I'll see if I can. Okay, thanks a lot for coming, everyone. We'll see you next time.